Good morning, afternoon, evening, guys. You're back another random tier list today. Talking about the show that everybody's talking about right now, Stranger Things Season 4. I have just finished Season 4 Part 2, the last two episodes. So if you have not watched those or if you are not caught up on the show in general, this will contain spoilers and you have been warned. We're going to go ahead and rank all of these characters from Season 4 onto this tier list, starting from Legend all the way down to I Hate You. There will definitely be some characters going all the way down there. And full disclosure, I did just finish this like an hour ago. So, may have a little bit of recency bias, but we'll see. We'll see as we get into certain characters how we feel about them. We're going to go in the order that they present them right here, and we're not going to waste any time. Let's start with Eddie Munson. Eddie Munson started out as a really average whatever character. He was actually pretty annoying at first, um, being almost like a pompous leader of the Hellfire Club. But as the show gets on, goes on, he has a lot of character development. And I'd say I'd put him in, at, in awesome tier by the end of it. He really became a hero, saving uh, potentially saving Dustin. You know, we don't know if the bats would have been able to get through the portal or not, but it looked like he wanted to fight and not continue to run away, and as he always does in his words. Uh, so Eddie Munson, awesome tier. I loved his character development. Both of the cops, which I'm going to be honest, I don't remember their name. Why are you like this? Why are you so useless? Um... They really just don't do anything, right? Where's the other? Here he is. They really just don't do anything, right? Like, they unsuccessfully try to stop the town from hunting Eddie. Um, they unsuccessfully really do anything. They're not even in, like, the second half of the season. Um, yeah, why are you like this? You're a, you know, they did not live up to Hopper's, uh, obviously, role as sheriff, um, I will say. Erica Sinclair, I think she was pretty great. Uh, an expanded role this season was good for her. She's obviously older, um, so it is does make more sense that she's helping out with the gang and everything. Um, Erica was a nice foil for her brother and for the rest of the Hellfire Club, um, where even though she is nerdy in herself and she's very smart, um, she's also a bit of, of a... Of a what do you want to say? She's not nice. I mean, she's a bit of a jerk to her brother and everything, but you can tell she still cares about him and stuff. Um, she's a nice foil to the other characters for sure. The Jock. What was this guy's name? I literally watched the show an hour ago, and I watched him be ripped in half. And wow, that was... Uh, I, it was kind of the ending that you, uh, you kind of wanted him to have, right? I hated this guy throughout the show. Um, I have the characters up on the side here. I don't remember this guy's name. Let me know in the comments. Uh, the Jock. I mean, Chrissy's boyfriend. Uh, yeah, he, he's a jerk. He obviously... I, I do like that there was more to his character than just, oh, I'm a jock and my girlfriend was killed. There was actually depth to his character where you see that he's pained. He really did love Chrissy. He asks, why wouldn't Chrissy come to me if she was hurting? And through all of that, he makes a great villain. He is one of the best villains they've had in the show in terms of just like a regular dude um and his fight with lucas was really really good at the end him coming in and, and you know messing things up uh i thought that uh he's really somebody that i hated and i kind of love to hate them so i'm gonna put him down here but you know good character uh, i will say next up we have uh nancy's friend the second guy that's killed in the show um yeah, I'm bad with names. This is a it's a repeated thing from my um, from my tier list, isn't it? Eh, it's not over here on the side. It's okay. Uh, what's his face? He was average, whatever. He was actually really, really annoying at first, and then you get to see more of his character once he actually gets in the car with Nancy and stuff. Um, you see him be a little more um, honest about how he's feeling, being scared about the situation and stuff. Where Nancy, obviously, she's been through scary stuff before, so she was the more the leader of that situation. And right up until he died, you, you really felt like there was more going on with this character than originally met the eye. So, average or whatever, not going to say, you know, he was bad, but definitely wasn't good either. Oh my god, the counselor. The counselor, I mean, I guess why would you take it seriously that these kids are saying that they're being, you know, stalked and possessed by demons, basically, right? Uh, but she just really wasn't helpful to anybody. In fact, she was... Because of her notes, she was actually technically not helpful. Um, not really her fault, but yeah. Um, as as somebody who's thinking of my own experiences with counseling and stuff, uh, in, you know, high school, whatnot. Uh, yeah, not a very good counselor overall, or at least uh, with how the show was set up, was not put in a situation to be a good counselor. 
Dr. Brenner, also hate him. Uh, very, very great villain as the show goes on. Even in his dying moments, he claims to have had Eleven's best interests in heart. Um, and I believe him. I actually do believe him. It's just that those best interests are so different from what Eleven wants for herself, are so different for what a quote-unquote normal person would want for Eleven. Um, yeah, I hate you. And yeah, not, not a fan. Next up, I believe this is one, right? Which is interesting because, spoilers, um, Vecna is, is one, right? So these guys are the same people. I think we're looking at one here. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a different character that I am forgetting about. But, I mean, that, that looks like Henry. That looks like one. So I thought he did a really, really good job in his role as, like, you know, the, the prison counselor or whatever. A little bit of an older kid. I kind of had a feeling he was one before that was revealed. But it was kind of a hunch. Um, it really could have gone either way. I thought they did a good job of masking that. Um, at the beginning, he really does look like he's going to be an enemy. But then he turns onto Elle's side, helping her escape. And then, of course, turns out to be the big bad in the end. Um, so I thought this was really good, how he was played. I really kind of hated him, though. Just his smug smirk really bothered me. So I'm going to keep him in good tier. Of course, though, once he turns into Vecna... Vecna was a very, very interesting villain this season. Um, I, I was talking with people about what we would describe him as, and he's very chaotic. He's very chaotic, but he also has some lawfulness in him, too, where he is talking about how inferior regular humans are to he and Eleven. Um, so in his opinion, he should be able to wipe them out, to destroy them, to create something, in his words, beautiful. Um, lots of layers there. Uh, he's an actual threat throughout the show, an actual scary threat as well. Um, the end of the first episode where we see Chrissy get just uh, mutilated at, on the ceiling of Eddie's house uh, is really horrifying. I had to turn the show off after that, actually, because I was not expecting it. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome villain. Um, really exciting to see what he comes back as or with next season. Chrissy was great in her role of just a normal cheerleader. I believe they said she was like an honor student as well. Normal, good girl who really, not even in the wrong place at the wrong time, was just randomly picked, it seemed like, by Vecna. Um, they did mention that everybody the Vecna targeted was a senior counselor, so maybe some correlation there, unless I missed it. I'm not sure why exactly she was picked, but obviously that sucked for her because she died, and it was not a very good death. I thought she was a great character, though. Really intriguing that first episode. You didn't really know where things were going to go. Um, you know, when they introduce characters like that, they're just going to die. I thought she was a pretty good one for that role. Next up, I believe we're looking at Vicky here. Her head got chopped off. Uh, Vicky, I thought, was a good love interest for Robin. Uh, they kind of tease it throughout the show that, you know, is she gay like Robin? Does she like girls? What's going on with that? Does she have, She did have a boyfriend. Um, does she even, is she curious, you know, what's going on there? I really liked in the last episode where they were exploring that a little bit and, uh, Robin got the chance to be kind of a suave, cool person in that, in that situation. We didn't really didn't see a lot from Vicky though. Um, so I am going to go ahead and put her in average or whatever. I thought she was good in the role, but, uh, definitely something that I would want to be expanded on next season. Max was great. Max was fantastic in her role. Sadie Sink, I believe, is the name of the actress who plays her. Fantastic playing a girl who has lost her brother, who has lost her her closest friends, some of them, who is now just living with her mom in a really crappy situation, um, you know, in the trailer park and everything. A, a girl who is very obviously depressed, who feels like she's lost her boyfriend to this jock lifestyle, or at least feels like she can't talk to him anymore. And we do get the confirmation of that in that last episode of how she is feeling, how she felt about her brother, um, you know, really deep down. And there's a lot of layers to her character and how she was feeling. And I loved her arc throughout this season. I thought she was fantastic. Absolutely legendary character here. Super, super interested to see what's going to happen next. Um, her heart is still beating, but she's in a coma. And in the last episode, when Elle kind of went into her mind or tried to with the bottle, um, she wasn't there. So whether that means she is actually dead, you know, her mind, 
or if Vecna has her. They didn't mention that Vecna absorbs people into uh, himself. So maybe Max is a part of Vecna now. I'm not sure. Going to go ahead and put uh, her character in Legend, though, for Season 4. Hopper, I thought was awesome. Um, he pl uh, He's played as a very, very strong-willed individual, right? He, he's so strong to put up with everything he has to go through in the prison. It does look like he has given up time and time again, but he still keeps fighting um, when he is given the opportunity to. Um, he does. He's put in several situations to fail, and he show he shows the heart to overcome those. Uh, Hopper was awesome in this season. I think this was probably his best showing uh, of the show so far. I thought he was really, really good. Um, I wish we had seen more of him with the kids, like we had in prior seasons. I thought that would have been cool, but I'm sure we'll see some of that in season five. Jonathan, I thought was good this season, but I got very, very frustrated with Jonathan with how he's just not being honest with Nancy. And we can see that is causing problems in their relationship, and presumably will continue to cause problems in his relationship. He's starting to get high and stoned a lot, which in itself, I, I'm not going to knock that as, you know, the downfall of his character, but obviously we can see that he is doing that to avoid his problems. He's not really being there for his brother, though. His brother is doing the same thing and not really talking about his problems either. Um, but yeah, Jonathan really ang angered me this season on how he was acting. And I, and I think he was supposed to, right? He, he was not a paragon of virtue this season, nor was he the most helpful. I mean, he always put his neck out on the line for his brothers and his friends. But obviously not being, uh, uh, not being honest with Nancy is going to have consequences. And he, then he didn't really do a lot at the end, right? Obviously, his kind of group, it was all L doing everything with, you know, the rest of them cheering them on, especially uh, Mike. Next up, we have the Russian. Where did I just throw him by accident? The Russian that helps Hopper escape or tries to help Hopper escape. What is this guy's name? Uh, uh, Antov? No, Dimitri. Okay, I just picked a, ra a random Russian name, I guess. Um, I actually thought he was really awesome. Uh, obviously, I do love Hopper a lot more. I like Eddie a lot more. I like Vecna a lot more. But for what this role was, which was more of a minor role, I thought it was play, played fantastically as a uh, you know a Russian dude who is just you know he, he is a, a little crooked, willing to take a, a bet. Um, that Russian accent is so good on him, where it's believable that he is Russian. I, I'm sure in real life he probably is, or at least fluently speaks it. I thought he was awesome. Um, he wasn't really a main character, though, so maybe we put him down in great. Maybe we put him down in great. Uh, but yeah, I thought he was played really, really well. And let me click here on my second screen. Did I get that name right? Dimitri. Yes, Dim oh, Dimitri Antonov. So I wasn't crazy with that Antonov name. Um, yeah, also known as Enzo. Yeah, okay, cool. Great tier for him. Mike, I am relegating to the great tier. In fact, Mike, good tier. Mike really, I, 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 for Mike's performance in the first couple episodes, I really want to put him down here uh, because he completely did not have L's back with all the stuff that happened in the ice rink. Um, I was watching the show and I don't know if everybody thought this, but L did exactly what she should have done in that situation or maybe not should have, but exactly what it was rational for her to do. She was completely bullied and humiliated, and nobody was going to do a thing about it. So she took matters into her own hand, and she whacked the girl. And at least in places where I'm familiar with, if you torment and bully and humiliate somebody that much, getting punched in the face or knocked in the head and getting a minor concussion is really what you're going to have coming to you. Uh, so... That was a real big thing with me that Mike did not back up L in any way. Um, he was completely n the the opposite of supportive of her through all of that. Of course, he was being lied to by L, which is a, a, obviously a big problem with their relationship, similar to Jonathan's and Nancy's. But I am going to go ahead and put him in the good tier. It's not until really that last episode where uh, Mike really finds himself as the heart of the group, as Will puts it. And I do think in season five, he will kind of fall into that role a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I really hated his first half of the season. He was he was a whiner and he was kind of useless. Similar kind of thing to Jonathan. We're seeing a, a correlation here. 
with that group that was uh, trying to help L. It took a long time for them to do something. The murderer or accused murderer um, didn't end up actually doing a lot. Victor Creel, I'm going to put him in average or whatever tier. Um, obviously, his son ended up being Vecna. Uh, lots of stuff to that, but it really, he didn't know that, and how can you expect him to? Um, he is put in jail for the murders of his wife and daughter. And yeah, I mean, he's he was necessary to move the plot forward. He was well played in that role. Average or whatever, can't say much else bad. Steve Harrington, absolute legend. Uh, he has matured so much in this role from the first season where he was really just a, a well, I guess they're in high school, so they're not frat boys, but really just a high school frat boy, right? Um, just trying to uh, sleep around, just trying to hit up girls, and not really caring about anything else. And obviously his friendship with Dustin, his friendship with the rest of the gang, his babysitting, as he often calls it, does change him. And by the end, I was really rooting for him and Nancy to be together, even though Nancy was still with Jonathan. So Steve, he's shown not only to be a leader now, to be brave, but also to be compassionate. And he really has become one of the leaders of the group, as he talks about with Nancy as they're driving the RV. Um, it's like his little family, um, or at least that's what he uh, envisions in the future for Nancy and himself in some ways. Uh, Steve, absolute legend, loved him this season. Eleven. Eleven was awesome. Uh, definitely hated how she was lying to Mike in the first couple episodes, but with how much she was being bullied, it's really hard to be critical of her with what was going on in her new school with her. She was really, really being just harassed and bullied. And the fact that nobody noticed that earlier really annoyed me. Um, obviously, Mike wasn't there, but yeah, not a very good job early on as his boyfriend. As her boyfriend, Will knew what was going on, but didn't know how L was lying. Right, so the first half of the season was a big mess with that kind of thing. But by the end, L really comes into her own, her own as a superhero. Um, she, you know, basically realizes or comes to terms with that she is not the monster, even though she did have a part in creating Vecna. Um, she does not, in the end agree with her uh, father figure, Dr. Brenner, on, you know, why he was doing what he was doing. She just says goodbye to him. I think she was awesome this season. She really turned into, well, she's always been a hero, but I think she really has developed as a hero. And in the end, she still lost. So I think that's a really interesting facet to her character where she's come into her own in terms of her powers, right? She has a lot of more confidence and control over them, but she lost, Interesting. She hasn't lost before, Mike said. Um, so that'll be interesting in Season 5, how that goes. But overall, Eleven was awesome this season. Joyce. There were some parts of Joyce that I liked this season, some parts I didn't like. I didn't like how... Maybe I can't blame her for being a little clueless about what was going on with Elle, but she was, and that, that did bother me. Um, I did like how strong Will Sheed was. Once there was even a chance that Hopper was alive, she wanted to take it. She was willing to do whatever it took in Russia to save Hopper and to help him on his journey. Um, she really came out of her shell in that way. Um, so I did really like her as as one of the mother figures in the show. Really the only mother figure of the show, right? Because Mike's mom is in it just a lot less, and I don't even know who else would be a mother figure. Um, yeah, I'd say Joyce was, was pretty great overall. But I'm going to leave her in that category with uh, the other people there. Oh my god, I hate this girl. The bully that just bullied L. Can we... Do you guys mind? Can we Can we make an extra tier here? Can we add a row below for this chick? I, I don't even want to remember her name. Absolutely bottom tier. Um, whoever played her did a fantastic job of making somebody I hate. And I literally screamed and cheered when she got smacked in the face with that rollerblade. Uh, exactly what she deserved. No questions asked. Mike's mom, Mike's mom, I'm going to put it in good. Uh, Mike's mom this season was good in the fact that she did have her kids' backs in some ways. I mean, she was looking for her kids and stuff. And at the end, you see that the, when they're when on the TV, they're talking about Hellfire Club being a cult. The mother and the father still are, they're on their kid's side in a way. Um, they know their, their kids are kind of involved with that. And they say, oh, well, the news, is, you know, it's nothing but a tabloid now. 
right? Because they're running away with these wild fantasies, which are not true. My cat is scratching my computer. Hold her. Go away. Stop. No. So, uh, Miss Wheeler, I'm going to put in good tier. She was a good mom, but not as good as Joyce, and obviously not as big of a uh, you know part of the story. I don't know who this is, nor who it's supposed to be in this. In this. So I'm going to put this over here. Let me know if, if this is a character I should be remembering or why this is here. I'm not sure who this is off the top of my head. Uh, the jock with the hat. You know, he always had the hat on. Oh, is this the is this the, the jock that got killed? This is probably the jock that got killed, huh? Why they use this picture of him? Okay, the jock that got killed, I'm going to put him in average or whatever. Uh, because You know, he's a basketball player. He does seem to have more of a friendship with Lucas than the other guys, but as soon as... Lucas, uh, you know, kind of turns on them, so to speak. He immediately just turns on him, and yeah. So average, whatever. I didn't hate him as much as the other jocks, but he also died, so he wasn't around as, as long either. Um, the basketball player with the hat on. Um, I didn't hate him as much. It kind of just seemed like he was following what, you know, his, his captain said, his boy said. Um, I actually, I don't know, maybe it's the hat. I, I just, I kind of liked his, his vibe in a way. I'm going to put him in why are you like this? Uh, cause he really wasn't helpful to anybody. He was detrimental to the plot in some ways. Um, but definitely, I, I don't, I wouldn't call him a leader in itself, in, in himself. Oh, Will. Will Byers. Will Byers, I'm having trouble putting because you have a lot of tension in the last episode where Will is talking about how Elle feels about Mike. And you definitely get the idea, or at least I got the idea, that Will is talking more about himself than Elle. Um, we do see some indications that Will may be gay or at least that he may have a crush on Mike. And that is definitely not reciprocated uh, in the show as anything more than friendship. Uh, Mike very much does love Eleven and he shows that. And that just leaves Will out. We see several shots in the show which show him as a third wheel. He, I believe he even mentions it at one point when they're at the skate park. Uh, or skating rink. Um, so Will was great in the show as being a almost reluctant character. He's very scared a lot of the times. And he's very unsure of himself. Um, and that's always kind of been his character, but we get some more layers now to that character, why he's feeling that way. Um, unfortunately, in a similar vein to Mike and Jonathan, he just really didn't do a lot. Um, I mean, they were responsible for saving Eleven from the from the facility, but I don't know that... I don't know. It's, they didn't do as much as, as the other team, right? They didn't do as much as Max and Steve's crew. Um, Will does give the whole pep talk to Mike, which is helpful in helping Eleven at the end, I'm going to put Will in great. I did kind of like his character a little bit more than Mike's this season, so we'll leave it there. Lucas, I really liked Lucas this season. I thought he was awesome. Um, his relationship with Max, um, he almost doesn't realize why it's gone downhill, and he seems a little confused as to why Max is so upset. He obviously knows that her brother passed away, uh, but having not gone through that himself, he is, in, he is at a bit of a loss as to how to help or how to feel. Um, we see him develop from, you know, he wants to be cool, he wants to be popular, but he doesn't want to throw away his friends, and I don't think he ever does anything to do that. He actually turns on the basketball players, turns on the jocks, to go and let his friends know that they are on the way, even though, uh, even when he doesn't really know a lot about the situation, he still puts his neck on the line for his friends, and at the end, taking the beating from the team captain, and eventually coming out with a little bit of a distraction... Some technical difficulties. Next up, we have what's his name, who speaks Russian and lives in California. Mm, why? Murray, Murray, Murray. Um, yeah. So Murray, um, obviously, when he's first presented to us as a character, does he actually live in California? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section what what the the backstory of Murray is, uh, because evidently I don't remember it. But I do remember when he was first per, first presented, he was a bit of a crazy person. Kind of a necessary, not, I don't want to say evil, but a necessary weirdo to have in the group for his information and intel. And in season four, he really comes into his own as a key member of the team. And one that I really actually liked. I, I'm going to put him as a great character. His playing of Yuri was actually really, really funny. 
and he played it really well. They actually look kind of similar once he uh, shaved his uh, uh, his beard and everything. And he also showed himself to be rather useful, um, knowing, you know, obviously being able to speak Russian. He's a black belt in karate or a brown belt or red belt, whatever he was, um, which actually was a little useful in the show. So he was a lot of comic relief for that, uh, the Russian team of heroes. And yeah, great tier list for him. Nancy Wheeler, legend tier. Nancy Wheeler, I thought, was fantastic in the show this season. She came into her own. I feel like I'm using that phrase a lot, but she really came into her own as a heroine, as one of the main leaders of the show. Her and Steve were holding it down as the leaders of the team. And Max, while she wasn't the leader of that side, was just so great in her portrayal. Nancy Wheeler, same thing. Um, you see so much depth to her character with her relationship with Jonathan, her friendship and potential crush relationship. It's complicated thing going on with Steve. Um, but she's incredibly strong-willed. She's the one that's leading them into... Um, you know, the upside down to fight Vecna and everything. She's the one who, despite Vecna being in her head, is still willing to go up against him. Absolute legend character. I loved Nancy Wheeler this season. I don't know who this guy is. I think he's one of the jerks that helped uh, bully um, bully uh, Eleven. So I think he was with this chick. Um, but uh, yeah, I I'm going to put him in I Hate You. If he is a different character, definitely let me know in the comment section. But he does not strike me as somebody that was super, super important. Pizza Guy. What's the Pizza Guy's name? Uh, it was Jonathan's friend. Um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's on, I'm bad with names, guys. I don't know, but he was funny. And he was actually useful because he could drive. Imagine that. Um, I, mean, I guess Jonathan could drive, but he didn't have a, a car, right? Um, but yeah, so this guy... Um, the works, works at uh, Surf Shack Pizza, or whatever it's called. I'm butchering these names. Obviously, the, in terms of being a main character, the least important character of the group, but in terms of actually propelling the story forward, one of the more important characters to the California group. Um, someone put in, in great here. He added some uh, comic relief to that side, uh, being a friend of Jonathan's and everything. And yeah, I thought he was a pretty great addition to the team. I hated Yuri throughout the show. He was funny, um, but you never knew if you could trust him or not. Obviously, uh, turning on the the uh, turning on on Joyce and uh, and what's his face obviously was a, a major step in the story going wrong. Right? Had he not done that, everything would have gone fine, and they likely would have been able to get back into the states to help with the rest of the plan uh, or the rest of the the issues going on. Um, so yeah, Yuri, I hate you. You can go in that tier. Dustin, absolute legend this season. Dustin's been consistently one of my favorite characters in the entire show. Um, really growing up in a lot of ways. We see his relationship with Steve, his relationship with Eddie. Um, we see how close he is to uh, the rest of the team. He's really the glue, I feel like, that binds all of our characters together in many ways. Um, and we definitely see that with Steve and Eddie. Um, I think he's really just played fantastically. And as he gets older and older, he's showing himself to be a leader in himself of the original group. We know that uh, we've said that you know Mike is the heart of is, is the heart of the team. I think Dustin is the heart of the team in a lot of ways as well. And then finally, we had Robin. Robin, I thought was I'll go ahead and put her in great tier. I don't think she was quite as awesome as Lucas, Eleven, or Hopper, um, but I think she was about on that same level of Joyce and and uh, uh, Erica. You know, she did provide some comic relief, but she was actually in my opinion a little annoying at times as well so i'm gonna go ahead and put her in great tier a lot of facets to her character her um relationship status throughout the show was very interesting to see how they took that on where she does have trouble finding somebody who has the same sexuality as her and we see that uh with vicky who i did talk about a little bit earlier so lots of things going on with robin's character gonna put her in great here excited to see where her character goes next season and that's it, guys. Lots of characters we went through. Lots of stuff to talk about with that show ending. Hopefully next year we'll get season five coming up. How did I do, though? Let me know in the comment section. Did I rank your favorite character high, low? What do you think? Who was your favorite character this season? And are you excited for Stranger Things season five? With all that said, guys, if you're watching this long, this has been a bit of a long one. Thank you for watching. And I'll be back with more tier lists tomorrow or the next day or something like that. Because this is the guy who makes random tier lists.
and I'm signing off.